Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast, hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the extreme pleasure of chatting with Stefan Truga, the very talented brick filmer from Stuttgart, Germany. Stefan began brick filming in the early 2000s. He created his YouTube channel, Golago Animation, in 2006, which currently has nearly 15 million views. With help from Stefan, Dave and I try to get the German pronunciations correct. This podcast is sponsored by Ninja Brick. For all the latest Lego leaks, news, and reviews, check out ninjabrick.com. Also, be sure to follow their social media channels, Ninja Brick News, for regular Lego giveaways and subscribe to their newsletter for exclusive updates. Their independent website has been created as a hub for Lego fans around the globe who want to catch up on all the latest news and reviews. As their website grows, they aim to build a community of fans offering help and tips to other like-minded people who are just as passionate about Lego. So please check out ninjabrick.com. Please help support our podcast by becoming a Patreon supporter. Get podcasts a week early and other perks only available to our Patreon supporters. So without further ado, here's our conversation with Stefan. Guten Tag, or good evening, Stefan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello and guten Tag. Thank you for uh, having me in the show. Hi, Dave, and hi, Kim. Hello. Hello. And yeah, I have to hi. say guten Tag because that's all I can pronounce. I can't pronounce the other. <laughs> but you're welcome guten to say Tag. it. Guten Tag is perfect. Guten Tag, hallo, you can say uh, guten Abend because now in Germany it's like uh, half past 5 uh, p.m. Uh, but I know you are six hours a go from my time. True, we haven't even had Behind. lunch yet. And we appreciate you taking the time to chat with us even after working all day. Very nice of you. <laughs> no problem, thank you. And we'll have you tell everybody where you're from. You're in Germany, but what, what city are you in? Uh, I'm, uh, I live in the city of Stuttgart, what it's like South uh, West Germany. Um, it's very close to the Black Forest, what is, I think, internationally known. And it's very close to the French border, what is like one hour drive. And it's close to the Swiss border. And Stuttgart is very uh, famous for the mobile car industry. We have Porsche here. We have Mercedes-Benz here. And uh, yeah. It's 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 a little city. It's not big like uh, New York, Atlanta, but I think we have more than one million uh, 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 people living here, and it's the town I live now for like uh, twenty years. But wow. I was born here, um, forty fifty kilometers uh, from Stuttgart in Böblingen, and I grew up uh, with my parents in Herrenberg, what is also uh, from Stuttgart, like a half hour drive. And I'm sure it's very beautiful there. No doubt at all. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but I, uh, I hate the winter and it's cold in the winter. <laughs> and, um, for winter time, I think there are more beautiful places I could live. <laughs> Sounds like that's where I need to be in the winter because I like the cold. So I would love it there. We can change. If Atlanta is not so cold, then we can change in winter time. Okay, deal. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I take my Lego with me to uh, Atlanta then. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fair enough. <laughs> now, do you speak any other languages other than German and English? Uh, not really. Not really. Uh, I would love to speak Portuguese because the last years I was uh, often in Lisbon, what is a very, very nice city, and I could live there maybe for a few years. Uh, but my job is here in Stuttgart, and these plans are maybe in like 10, 15 years, then I can travel around for a few years. But for the moment, no English, German. I understand little Italian, and I can order ice cream in Italian or a pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all. That's all. <laughs> well, what else do you but need? Pizza and ice cream? That's, that's really all you need, right? And the bathroom <laughs> for me. Uh... No, I eat, I, I like a lot of food. I, I like the, the German food. I like uh, spirits. I really, I had spirits uh, this afternoon um, at, at work. There was spirits with a honey lace. And um, 
I like baking very much. The last <laughs> years, I, I I I checked that I really like to bake like cakes or um, bread or whatever. But within the last month, it was little less bacon. But a year ago, I was baking a lot. So and I really love cooking, but. Normally, uh, when I work under the week, I'm not the guy cooking uh, when I come home. Um, but at the weekends, I love to cook. But I think if I cook, there's a lot of Italian food I cook, like spaghetti, bolognese. And um, I do pizza and I do my, my own pizza. Um, uh, now I have to think about the word in English, teig. Let me, I have my iPad with me here and I can translate it. Wait. Um, the dough. No. Dough, yes. Oh. I do my own dough wow. for the pizza. And um, so this is really, I, I, it's, it's, it's the best pizza for me if I do everything my, on my own. I'm not growing the tomatoes outside, but <laughs> I mean, a good dough for a pizza is, is the half price, you know? I agree. Wow. It sounds like we actually just need to move in with you. You certainly have enough Lego for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think a lot of people could come here and we could build something. Um, the problem after that is, if you all leave, who has to sort the Lego in again? It's me. Uh, no, we would help you with that. I mean, that's a fair trade oh. for the food that you make, that, that we would definitely do that for you. Okay, if we ever do a big, big, big party, I was listening to uh, some of the other podcasts, and there was uh, one question about all the brick firmers could meet. Um, if we ever will meet in Stuttgart, then I will do uh, a big, big, big party pizza for everyone. And if you promise that everyone helping cleaning, cleaning up either the kitchen or mm -hmm. the Lego room, then this is fixed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do hope that will happen one day, wherever it will be. It is something we all want. And uh, that would be so exciting and something to look That's forward really to. That's really funny because when, when I started brick filming, so let's say in 2004, 5, 6, 7, I always thought how funny would this be if there would be a big convention or a big, big, big thing where brick filmers just could meet. And, and um, we had this with uh, the German brick film community um, within the last years because the Steinerei Brick Film Festival uh, was hosted the first time 2004. I think if I remember that, so it's it's quite a long time, and the German uh, scene, um, also the the people from Austria, um, they meet uh, once a year now at this event. I think we will go into that deeper later. Definitely. But yeah, that that was a big dream all the time to bring all these people together. But I think there's no one of us being a millionaire at the moment and could afford all the money for the tickets and uh, the flights. And yeah, maybe, who knows, one of the younger um, brick filmers will be a big, 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 big guy in the film business. And then he says, oh, come on, let's spend $1 million to do that. I hope so. That, that would, would be, be nice. Awesome. That would be amazing. That would be great. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, so um, the Brick Films Wiki has you active from 2003 until now. Um, so happy 15 years of Brick Filming. And, yeah, and... The, the last years it was a little less, but uh, yeah, it's a long time. It's a long time, absolutely. So what got you interested in doing Brick Films to begin with? Um, I was always interested since I was a kid in stop motion animation because especially here in Germany there was for the really young kids um, um, a special thing to go at sleep so let's say kids from the age to uh, one to three it, it was called Sandmännchen what means Sandman and this was an animated little puppet and um, there was also when I was a child on TV from uh, the Czech Republic, they had a lot of claymation movies, what uh, were aired here in Germany on the child uh, TV programs. And I was always fascinated uh, to do my own uh, animated movies. Also, I was a big fan of uh, Disney um, um, movies, the, the painted things. My, my very first uh, um, movie, in, in a cinema with my daddy was the jungle book from disney and i was i think i was like six years so this is late for going to the cinema but it was my very first uh, cinema um, movie i've seen 
And so there was always some kind of thing inside myself to make animated movies for on my own. Um, in the same time, I was always being confronted or being um, uh, in a thing with, with recording, um, audio recording. Um, my daddy started in the 70s. I was born in 73. And he really started in this time with his tape recorder. Uh, to record my voice and to ask me questions and uh, to play something with me. And I still have these little old tapes. And as soon as I understood how the tape recorder works, I did it on my own and I recorded little plays and uh, whatever. I was playing always with audio since I was young. And this then later went into my job when I was like 15, 16 years old, I uh, DJed in a um, dance school. There was Saturday afternoon, there was the young kids party. And I, I DJed there and the mixture of DJing, recording with my recorder and buying a little DJ mixer and all that stuff. And in the same time being at school on um, on the school, um, um, wait, I, I, I have to put it in. <laughs> I love then this. Then we know the word. I mean, I mean, I can describe a word and we can make a kind of game out of it. I describe the word, you say the English word, um, and if you're right, then you get a point. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I can't judge because I don't know if you're right, because I don't know the word. Uh, the school newspaper. I was in the, on the school newspaper. Well, I think that's right. And, that you have that. Yeah, journalist. I was also, yeah, and I was also interested in journalism, and so this mixture of audio and school newspaper or journalism, then uh, went into the radio thing. I'm still working on. Um, when I was like 12 years old, I remember recording um, a whole radio show just for my daddy for his birthday with fake interviews with people and all that stuff. And I, I think I was like five, six, year, seven years old and I was listening to the radio and looking to the speakers of my daddy and I thought in my head, I want to go inside. So um, there was always some kind of thing going to the radio and doing something on and in the radio. And um, this all beside the dream to do animation uh, animated stuff but if you are a child of the 70s and um, your youth was in the 80s then we had not all the technique the people today have so there was not like having just a little smartphone and going to record something with video in 4k we had nothing my my, my daddy had no super 8 camera um, later, when I was 12, 13, he had a VH, uh, VH, S. Oh, hi. S, S, yeah, video recorder. We get a point. Where the whole, where the whole recorder was big like uh, whatever. You had to put it on your shoulder and in the same time having a big camera. Um, I was experimenting with that stuff, but not um, for animated movies because you know, stop, play, stop, play, record, play. You can't do like frame exactly things with that stuff. But I was recording, like interviewing myself. I recorded an interview on a tape. I, uh, where the answer should be, I, uh, I was quiet. And later I was playing the tape and sitting on the couch filming me from one side, stopped the, uh, the video recorder, went to the other side and gave the answer. So I made interviews with myself, wow. uh, changing clothes. And this was the first stuff I did with video, um, but not thinking about how can I use this stuff to make animated movies. That came later in 2003. Uh, when uh, a friend of mine, he's uh, also a musician, and he told me, hey, hey, Stefan, I found a program on the web. It's called uh, I Stop Motion, and it's uh, for the Macintosh computers, and um, it's, it does stop motion animation. And I said, oh, that sounds cool. Um, I downloaded the trial, and I uh, checked it for a few nights and thought, wow, great. Now I can do that stuff, what I really wanted to do. 
And this was the time when the first uh, little test movie started, like my, my very first one, what is still on YouTube, uh, Strange Day First Night. And um, so this hint from my friend, hey, there's a software, just check it, was um, the thing for me to go into animation. And I had my sound for all the years. I'm a sound designer uh, mostly. So also, although I, I started as a journalist, um, in the same time, I always mixed and uh, produced little uh, advertisements for the radio. And so I, I was all, always in both, in, in the production, in the presentation, in the journalism thing, all mixed together somehow. But then suddenly I had uh, the stuff and the technique to, to do um, pictures and to make uh, pictures what move. And this was the point uh, when I started to, to uh, do brick films because in the same time this friend told me, hey, there is this program. I found, um, I don't know, it was not on brick, uh, um, brickfilms.com, but it was movies from brickfilms.com on some website and i saw the first two or three animated lego movies and i thought oh my god this is lego and you can do stop motion with it and then it made click in my head and i called my mom and i said hey mom where's my lego <laughs> and she said and she said it's everything is here it's in the basement and i said okay i'm coming directly and fetch it so i fetched these two little uh, boxes my daddy made years ago when I was a child with all my old Lego and thought, wow, now you can do movies. But if you know my movies, I think big. <laughs> and the child Lego was not enough. So the next step was a few weeks later, I went to a supermarket and I bought like 10 of these big basic boxes from uh, these blue Lego boxes with basic pieces, sorted them all uh, in colors and sa uh, said to myself, okay, now we have Logo Lego, now we have more Lego, now I can start. And uh, yeah, this project from 2003 till now is a little bit over my head. It, 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 it's, um, yeah, it, it went bigger, 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 bigger. And um, now I have a whole room full of Lego and sometimes within the last year, so I thought, uh, oh my God, what are you doing exactly here? <laughs> yeah, your room actually, we, we've seen, you know, behind the scenes, your, uh, it looks like a store, actually. Your, your room is like a Lego store. It's all sorted perfectly. You have the amazing, the table. May, Should we get into the maybe table? One, maybe one day I have to big, I have to do a big hour sale and then it's a store, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. You can't get rid of them. No, no, I, I, I would sell a lot of other stuff I bought. So things you, you, you use one time and then you never use it for years. Uh, so I, I can sell so many things, but I think I won't sell the Lego. Exactly. This, because it's just too cool to do something with it. And you're too talented. Um, you're very talented. We, we always, yeah. we, before we do our podcast, I, Dave and I always have to refresh our memory on, on the work of the person um that we're interviewing and uh it's just such a pleasure to to see your your work and and everything that you put into it and... thank you very much I'm, I'm a bit lazy at the moment so i think uh i was hosting steinerei uh two years ago in stuttgart and this was a lot of work in organization and i was a bit tired uh about uh, all the lego stuff after that <laughs> but um mm -hmm. It's funny because within uh, the last days, I was in my uh, Lego room, uh, what is really a room um, uh, down in the first floor um, under my living room. And I started to rearrange it a little bit. And do you know that if you if you want to do something new that you need a clean table and you, you, you cannot start if there's so many things uh, laying around? Do you know that problem? Yes. Well, yeah. clean. I'm not and sure. What... I, I keep the I keep you the do. studio clean. You do. And I recently I... sorted to uh, sorted yeah. by a uh, uh, brick type instead of color uh, uh, last uh, 
I guess it was a year and a half ago, but yeah, I love sorting by uh, type. I really love sorting too because it 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 gets you it, it makes your head clear. It's like pressing a reset from from the normal life. And it's like, like a stupid work. You just sort bricks and at the same time you watch a movie or whatever. I really love that. I only hate it if you have a big, big, big set what you have to destroy. Um, and um, you know this will take you like two two days or whatever. But if you sort, um, it really refreshes my head sometimes. But in the same time, if you build, it refreshes your head and um, is fun. So, But I can't really go into a new project if there's still so many things lying around and you have the chaos around you. And so within the last days, I really started to rearrange the room. My room for uh, doing the movies is, 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 is two rooms. It's like an L. And one room is really for the animation. So there's only one table and one of these big IKEA uh, shelves with uh, the coffee corner houses I'm collecting. And the other room is just like the magazine for all the Lego parts. And I just noticed that my table to build is really crap. So this is the things I have to rearrange and in the same time to to make it uh, walkable. Is that the right word? If you want to walk in a room and you can't, so you make it Functional. walkable. Functional, yeah. That, that, that Functional, works. yeah. Um, if you... Yeah. If you can't walk in anymore because because there's too many things laying around, so. And speaking of your desk, is that the uh, you work on a motorized desk, the magic motorized Lego animation desk? You got from IKEA. Oh yeah, the IKEA. Yes, that's that's the IKEA thing. Yeah, I I I've seen this years ago that they sell it, and I thought, okay, I buy it. Um, because I always, like every brick filmer, uh, we are studying, uh, we are trying, we, we see some other film made by someone else and think about how did he do this. And so for camera movements, uh, either it's vertical or um, horizontal, um, we know there are several things how you can do it, but to do a... Um, Vertical cam movement, um, when I tried it first, I had this little tripod with the uh, thing to put it up and down. Uh, Kobel in German. Wait, I look for the word. The crank. The crank. Uh, crank. The crank, yes. Wait, <laughs> see if you're right. <laughs> yeah, the crank. So if you have this little crank, I had a tripod with a crank and I tried this and it worked, but it was like a little shaky. And... Then I've seen this this table that they sold it on IKEA. I don't think if if they have they if they have this item all the time, but uh, I, di I directly bought it because I thought this is perfect for doing uh, camera movements um, in a vertical way, and uh, yeah, it works. And also, uh, you can either work in sitting or you just put it up and you can stand while animating. Although if I'm animating, I make it comfortable and I have one of, of a bar chair um, and sitting on the bar chair and uh, but the table is up and uh, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's really good. It's a bit uh, small sometimes if you have bigger sets, but it works really good and I love it if I work on it. Was Paragraph filmed on that? Yeah, absolutely. Because all these camera movements uh, were done um, either by um, putting the table up and down to go up and down in the set, or if uh, the camera moves um, to right or left uh, on a horizontal way, then I have a big, 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 big liner, what is made of steel. I think this is like one meter long, what is like, I don't know how many inches these are. Um, and to do the camera movement then on... Uh, on the horizontal way, I just, uh, or we just um, moved the whole set for a half millimeter or one millimeter or two millimeters. So this is, yeah, how, how all the camera movements were made for Paragraph. The whole thing with Paragraph was to make the whole movie uh, look like there's one camera movement with all. And I think it, 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 worked, it worked well with the table. 
Yeah, that was an incredible, incredible uh, brick film. Just it, it looked like all one shot and just everything that was going around on the set and the camera moving. It was it was incredible. There's a little light flickers because when you stopped working and then on the other day I started again, um, somehow the light was a little different. And if you see these light flickers, then you know, OK, this is the next day he worked on it. Yeah, but, I was watching yeah, it they, this morning, and I, I noticed, it's like, I bet you that's when uh, the day uh, switched over. It's for some reason, when you turn those lights off and on or just let them sit, things just change overnight. The little bit of le different yeah. electricity or gravity affects the set. It's just a little bit of, a little bit different if you stop it. you got to continue your, uh, your shot all the way through. It's hard to do, but considering that pretty much all looked like one shot, uh, that what you would have had to probably work for four days straight to do that. Yeah, yeah. Four days and four nights. Yes, <laughs> I can't stay up more than <laughs> and, about thirty-six hours. And so. not sleep, not sleeping in between. But right. you know, if you if you are too long on a set and you have no sleep, then uh, you make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> exactly. And also, um, I want you to pronounce. I don't well, want to be the only see, one see, mispronouncing. Steinery. <laughs> Um, that the paragraph was the 2015 jury third place choice and the audience second place choice. Um, amazing, amazing video. But speaking about Steinery, um, you, in 2005, I believe your uh, Totentanz uh, yeah. won best um, audience choice. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. I wasn't there in this time. I think this was the first Steinerei. Um, and uh, Totentanz was uh, not um, put into uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Steinerei by me, the organizer who is um, a media professor uh, who started this. Uh, I can tell you a little more uh, later. And he asked uh, different people, hey, can I play your movie at Steinerei? And we all said, yeah, 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 do it. And so the first Steinerei was not a festival like it is now, where people make movies, especially for Steinerei. Um, Matthias Mertens, he's the guy who invented Steinerei. He was, uh, or he is a media pro professor and um, he was interested or he stumbled across brick films like we all did. And then he found the communities. And I think he was first in the community in the German brick board and asked people about it, uh, how this works. And then he suddenly uh, noticed that all the people he's talking um, are like 20 years younger than him. And uh, then a half year later, um, he also tried out and made one or two little movies. Um, he said, or he, he wrote a thread about, hey, people, what do you think if we make a little community meeting um, uh, with, with a little contest? And this is how Steinerei started. So he made this years, I think, till 2009 or 10. He hosted Steinerei every year not on his own he made it as a project with his students later so every year an, a new uh, group of students made this like a year work for uh, creating an event and steinerei was with in this time it was um, in north germany um, all the time and the people were traveling uh, to Hildesheim, uh, where it was uh, hosted, and to Wolfsburg, where it was hosted, what is all more in the north part of Germany. And um, I think um, in 2009, um, he was a little bit tired of organizing that. And Matthias Mertens is also a guy, he has a lot of ideas. And he was hosting um, them the European um, air guitar contest, what was a new idea he, he started. And he said to us, um, come on people, Steinerei is not anymore a little baby. It is well known and it's uh, since years. Um, um, and now you can do it on your own. And since that, um, the older guys from the German uh, scene, from the German brick film scene, uh, are organizing Steinerei on itself. So um, 
every year another uh, either it's a group of people like nicht gedreht uh, these are two brothers uh, four people and they hosted it um, now in 2018 what's next uh, it's in hamburg um, uh, hosted by dirk böttcher who also uh, did a lot of movies within the last years and won a lot uh, of prizes for in steinerei and this is how uh, steinerei now steinerei now uh, travels around germany and it was also hosted in austria in um, um, in, in Austria, on, on, on Wörthersee. No, not, it was not the Wörthersee. Let me check that. Um, Austria was uh, Steinerei hosted. So every year um, after Steinerei, there's the question who's next. And um, I hope that the younger people will do it within the last years. But the problem then is if someone now is like 16, 17, um, maybe in two or three or four years, he's uh, studying, uh, he's on a university somewhere else, not living on his um, home place or whatever. And they, they have other things to do if they study than organizing um, a Steinerei Film Festival. But Steinerei really is, uh, is, is, is like a big community event because the people meet, the people know each other since years. It's like, um, hello. And then we try to have a pre-party thing like, um, having people from the film business, they tell you about story writing or whatever. So it's it's more just only um, the cinema event with prizes. Um, it's it's a pre-event. It's it's the Steinerei itself in a cinema. What is really cool if the people can watch their homemade little Lego worlds on a big 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 kino screen. And after that, there's an after show. So. We met there and we have pizza or whatever. There's a big buff buffet and uh, we have a drink. And this is really great because the people really know each other now. What what maybe works um, in Germany because Germany is as big as whole Florida. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's easier for people just to meet there. Uh, although also if they come from Austria, if, if you go from Austria maybe to Hamburg, it's maybe it's like a 12 or 14 hours drive. Or if you if you take the train uh, same time, or if you take the plane, maybe it's one hour uh, to travel to. So this is easy for people. I think uh, I think such a thing in America and the United States would be much more complicated to to organize and to get all the people together there. Sadly, but yeah. I, I would um, I would say uh, to you, uh, try it, because uh, it's really cool if people could really meet in real and not only on the internet. Yeah, we had, we did have the opportunity with um, BrickFlix. What year was that? years back in Raleigh, um, North Carolina, where we met David ah, Pagano. Cool. And David, uh, oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> David Pagano and... Um, Will. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the, Will Stroh. Will Stroh. And, and like you said, getting to watch our little brick film on the big screen with an audience um in a theater was was an amazing feeling and and yeah. yeah getting to meet people that you know because the brick film community with all the websites we all feel like we know each other already and to actually meet in person and get to talk shop you know um and about the brick yeah. filming is, is just an, an amazing wonderful thing to do but I'm yeah. very jealous of the German brick filming community to have Steinerei. Um, Steinerei. Steinerei. Uh, <laughs> I laugh at him. It's funny. I laugh at me too. It, it's it's one of my even though I you know it, I'll probably never get to go there and wouldn't know wouldn't understand what was being said there. It's it's probably my favorite uh, brick film festival just because of the community y'all pull together there. Um, I know uh, David Pickett does some something up in Chicago for I think Brick World Chicago and I and I know there's the um, um, Cinebrick in Portugal um, that seems yeah, to draw yeah. a lot of folks. But uh, you guys yeah. have a special community, um, and it's 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 wonderful to see what y'all y'all do. Yeah, and it's a long time that uh, that uh, Steinerei now is hosted, so it's it's really like it's it's a traditional thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a big problem with Steinerei this year because uh, we always have a theme, what you are, um, the theme for a movie, and I cannot go in. Um, I have so less ideas at the moment for this kind of theme, <laughs> uh, and I only have like two or three 
two and a half months to do it. And then there's um, the, the the thing to give, uh, how do you say, wait, I have to, uh, my translator, um, the deadline. Uh, the deadline. Uh. deadline is like in, in, I think it's April. And um, I don't know what to do. I need ideas. I have ideas, but uh, every idea is just too, too cheap. You know, if you, if you do that movies and you want always to be better in the next one and you don't think, I can't just go back and do something what is not better than my last one. So this makes it more and more complicated, you know? And, um, yeah, the theme is, 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 is it's, it's so simple. It's like, uh, if you translate it in English, it's just heroic, oh, okay. but you, you could do like Superman movies or whatever, but I don't know. I need, I need to find my little special thing to get into that theme to, to, to find, a movie I can do with it. I have a few ideas, but every idea is not really perfect at the moment. Um, but this really would be or will be the next uh, movie I have to do within the next weeks or two months. So otherwise, I would not have any entry to um, to, to enter the contest. Uh, but I told Dirk Böttcher um, and I promised him that I will be there and uh, promised him to make a movie. Um, anyway, I checked the date um, and um, I took off uh, days at work just to be there. And if I really, really not get a movie for it, I hope it's not <laughs> getting to that point. I will be there and will 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 visit the show and visit uh, people and uh, the community meeting and, and Steinerei. But yeah, for the moment, I'm really I'm I'm a bit empty of of ideas. I don't know. I'm I'm also a little bit tired of uh, animating minifix. I don't know why, uh, but I'm really tired of doing brick films with minifix. I'm so fascinated still from big fix, like the Pagano figures, um, like, uh, I don't know, there's so many, all these adult fans of Lego doing not movies, but just building, they do so wonderful stuff. And if you Google and you get inspiration, but, um, if you see these, all these figures they build, that's so crazy. I mean, also this, this, the size of the, um, you know, the Legoland, uh, size of, uh, figures. Yeah. We'll this is really size. interesting too. And I think something like this, I will do not, not moving around minifix and having the coffee corner houses in the background or, or as a own created, uh, styles. Uh, I, I want another scale or just breaking it down to a abstract thing. I don't know. Um, so the big I'm, ones, I'm, the big I'm, ones I'm, I'm searching the needle in the hay. You know that? Well, I don't know. You're very creative, so I don't doubt that you will find something. And, and anybody can be heroic. So yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, but but that that simple theme makes it so hard for me, you know? Sure, you can you can use Batman, you can use Superman. Maybe they have a little funny conversation, or they they fly around, or Superman flies around and helps um, our old grandma uh, over the street or whatever. This all would be heroic, but it's, I think for me it's too cheesy. I want something what is more abstract, what is more, you know, my movies always have something like a little social uh, criticism or whatever. So I'm looking for that kind of little thing to put into that theme, and maybe I'm thinking too compli Maybe maybe I think too complicated. I don't know. Um, I I sometimes I need a little pressure to to find the stuff, you know. And the closer it goes to the deadline, maybe then there suddenly comes the big idea. And it's like either you have an idea and you can make a movie on a whole weekend, and it's there. Um, or you have the idea and you need like weeks for doing it. Um, let's see what happens at the moment. I'm, I'm a little confused what to do. Well, we loved your, um, 2009, I guess it's Mimus or Mimus. The, um, yeah. the one with the, uh, the two life-size figures and the little, uh, dog. With the dog. Yeah. yeah the that, dog, was, that was um... adorable. Um, have you and I, I guess you used uh, that was all stop motion and you, and Kim voiced for uh, the, I guess the most stupid video on the YouTube ever and that I believe you shot in uh, with regular oh, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I love that one, of course. It's a fun one. <laughs> it's adorable. Have you animated uh, uh, the, those large figures um, since say 2010? 
No, they they have a lot of dust now on the heads. <laughs> yeah. These two, uh, I have to say, um, um, people are often asking um, on on YouTube um, in the comments of that clip, um, how long did it take to build that figures? And I wrote it several times. I never was building these figures. I found them on eBay. These two guys um, were standing. Um, in a shop for children clothing. Oh wow! And uh, it's original from Lego, and I found them, and I thought, oh my god, that's that's quite nice. Uh, I need them just for my Lego collection to put them somewhere. And um, then I uh, traveled to, I think it was like 400 kilometers, what is like uh, 300 miles uh, to fetch them, and they were not so expensive. I think I paid for both of them like around like 300 euro what is not so much i think because they are really cool and then they were standing for like two or three years just in the lego room and staring at the wall and this movie mimos uh, was also made for steinerei and it was the fifth steinerei um and the theme for this fifth steinerei was five because it was the fifth and uh, in this time, I was making movies together with Sandra Abele. Um, uh, she was my girlfriend at this time. And we both were thinking, what can we do with the five as a movie? And to use these figures was really a, f a sudden idea because I was walking my Lego room and then I seen this figure and I've seen the hand of the figure, the Lego hand, and I thought, man this hand has five fingers so why not using these five fingers to do something and they build lego and then the idea was okay let's reuse this kind of dog with five lego pieces what i originally uh, animated in the movie he's coming in 2000 and uh, i don't know four or five um, and it, it was a little Lego dog made out of five bricks. And so the five uh, played along in this movie. And it started with the hand. Uh, this figure is watching its own hand and sees, hey, it's fingers. I can move my fingers. And um, it's five fingers. So it grabs into a big box of Lego, takes out five Lego pieces. And now with t two hands, what is twice five fingers, ten fingers, it starts to build and makes this little dog. And so this movie started, um, uh, yeah, the idea was uh, using these fingers and Lego plays or builds Lego and plays with Lego. So this was, was the whole idea behind it. I have to say for all, a lot of my movies, um, especially within the first years. I never wrote scripts or um, illustrated something because either the whole thing was in my head or um, the other um, thing was I started just doing a test. How can I do that? And then I played around and I, I made my pictures and I had my little scene. And it's like like a child is play, playing with, with Lego. Um, there's maybe one thing, okay, there's the good guy, there's the bad guy, there's the castle, and okay, what happens now? What is a question what every filmmaker asking himself when he's writing a script? What is happening now uh, or next? And within all my first movies, there was the first aim was, okay, let's try out this. How can a car drive? Or how can this figure walk there? Or how can a dog make um, a special trick. And in this kind of trying out how you can animate that, the story around suddenly uh, created itself. So this is really how a lot of my movies started. Uh, I say within the last years, when, when, when you really think about a big, big, big project like Eye Water, what needs uh, what really needs a script because you have dialogue and you have to write something and you, you have to see how the film or the movie itself uh, can go forward then you have to 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 script th something and you have maybe to make a little um, 
ähm, Play, ähm, ähm, äh, how do you say, ähm, Drehbuch, not, not Drehbuch, äh, Play, Play Thing, where, where, the, where you see, uh, where you cartoon, uh, where, where you paint all the stuff and then you see what, what can happen. Um, what is the English word? Oh gosh. Storyboard? Is that Storyboard? If, if you illustrate uh, the, the movie, um, there's a special word I don't yeah, know. Story, anymore. Storyboard or anima uh, anima uh, animatic. Storyboard. You're so right. How can I forget storyboard? Okay. Um, yeah. And and within the last years, uh, with bigger projects and movies, uh, also for um, for paragraph, I was making a little storyboard because in this case you really have to know what goes on. But in the same time, while the movie is um, is is filmed, then you suddenly have an idea. Oh yes, I can put this in too. And so little things just happened while I was animating, uh, especially in paragraph. They were not scripted. Um, uh, they just happened because I thought, oh, this could be funny. I just do this or this could be funny. I just try out this. But um, mostly in the most movies, I never wrote a, um, a storyboard or a script. And like I said, the, the really first 20 movies I made uh, beside Totentanz, um, They really were tests, and out of this test, they suddenly started uh, started being a little clip uh, or just a little movie. With Totentanz, it was totally different with A Dance of Death, because um, this is the old poem written by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe uh, 200 years ago. And I had this poem in a book when I was um, also uh, in my youth, like nine, 10, 11 years old. It was a little book with short stories about horror. Uh, horror, um, And there was this poem inside. And I really loved this uh, reading as a kid. And uh, the funny thing is, I also recorded my own voice when I was 12 years old reading this poem. And <laughs> I, I don't know if you have ever seen, uh, if, you, if you go to YouTube and you... Uh, search for Totentanz. There's not only one Totentanz, there's another one. Because years after I made Totentanz, uh, what is the 10 minutes uh, clip, I made another Totentanz and I used my old 12 years old voice oh, wow. uh, for, for, the, um, for the speaker. And uh, in the background, I made um, all the sounds uh, just by my mouth what is really similar to uh, the Dance of Death original. And I really tried to animate really, really, really cheap that it looks like it's done by a child who's doing it the first time, you know? Um, so a lot of things are really, really, I made this, I think it was like one, uh, one afternoon on a weekend. And uh, I uploaded this under another name on YouTube. Uh, what is called, I think it's Lego Eve, because my second name is Eve, what is like French, Eve. Um, and so if you search for Totentanz and Lego Eve, you will find my remake of Totentanz with my own voice when I was 12 years old. We're going to need to, to, to look yeah. that up in live. Yeah, we actually watched um, the English Totentanz version. this morning. Um, ah, yes. It's such an amazing... If you know the English version, then you will understand the German version too. And um, yeah, it's like I said, it's my voice when I was 12 years old. And I recorded this um, uh, poem uh, on a tape recorder just because I wanted to. I don't know why. I just did it. So, And years later, I uh, was listening to the stuff on, on these old tapes. And then I said, ah, yes, I recorded Totentanz when I was 12. Okay, let's remake Totentanz. And just make it look like a child is doing token dance, you know? <laughs> I think that's amazing. Um, one of my favorite scenes um, in that was when he was up in the tower and he's looking out the window up at the, in the, at the moon, the sky. Just yeah. that view was just beautiful. Um, so Thank many you. parts Thank of you. that movie, obviously, so amazing. Um, and so discussed, especially in the... Um, bricks in motion documentary everybody talked about it everybody knows it everybody loves it um it, it's just fantastic work as, as is all of your work thank you thank you yes uh, this, this movie i think it's still one of my best movies uh, although it's so old um 
And if you really look deep into it, it's not all Lego. We, we were building uh, one plate and we put everything on one plate because uh, I don't know. I think this was like the, the fifth or sixth movie I was doing on animate, uh, with animation. And there was not uh, the thinking about, okay, we don't need the whole church. We only need um, a micro scale church and we can do it like this. So we, we were building the whole scene, the whole set on one big a wooden plate and also working with a uh, paper mash. Is that right? Paper mache. Uh, yeah, papier, pa papier, pap mache in German. Yeah, uh, or it's, it's French, pap, pap mache. Um, so um, it was the time when I only had my little Lego and not like now. Uh, nowadays, I would try to build everything out of Lego. Absolutely sure. Um, not because I'm a totally purist, but um, if you if you have that stuff and you could build it, then it looks cool if you do it in Lego. But at this time, there was also stuff from um, the the model train uh, things like bushes and all that stuff. And we, we were not thinking about can we use that, can we not. We just made a scene and then we put the camera around and, and had a look through the camera and think, okay, this looks good, okay, next there, okay, this looks good, okay, there. So the whole film is with two uh, sets. It's the big set with uh, the church and the churchyard on it, the churchyard. And there's only one other set, what is the inside of the uh, rooftop of the church where he's inside. These, these are the only two uh, little uh, sets we, we, we made and used in this time. And yeah, it was also to experiment with it. Um, there was never the thing, um, it will be a 10 minutes movie. It, it was a 10 minutes uh, plus movie later, but um, the first thing was just, hey, we make some cool black and white um, animated uh, horror uh, movie thing. And what was the easy thing for us, what I always tell younger people, if they want to make a movie for the first time and they say, ah, what can I do? I need a big story and I want to make a two hours movie and whatever. Um, if you have a poem you like and you just do the pictures on through the poem, then you have the story already. The story is there and you just do the pictures on it. It's really easy. Um, not starting to think about your own story. And um, this is... Uh, what made it easy for us to make this big movie because we had not to think about the story. Okay, we had to think about the pictures, what will happen, but the story was already there. And um, yeah, I, I hope if Goethe would see this in the sky, uh, in, in, in heaven, then uh, he would like it. So he would love it. Um, yeah. And that that's great advice. Um, and watching your movies this morning, we, um, you know, you have so many that were inspired by these poems. And they're all so beautiful. They're beautifully done, and they're so enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I mean that—that's really a great idea. You can tell. You, you, we can feel your inspiration. It comes through in your work. Um, and yeah. A lot of the older ones that you did as well, where there's, um, you know, no talking at all. You said, like you said, you did no, no storyboard. It just there was no talking, but yet it speaks volumes. You don't even need any talking, and you can feel all the emotion. I love. Um, the Mimus, what we were talking about earlier, it, it I love it. it. It is just so enjoyable, so wonderful, and and it speaks volumes without any words, and that amazes me. Yeah, but I think always it's 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 very hard to do a movie without words because um, the, the the watcher has he he needs to understand everything without the words, and I think this makes it really hard. Um, sometimes I think it's it's the the king class to do a movie without words. Is king class right? The mm. Königsklasse. Let me try my translator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Königsklasse yeah. is the king class. Do you know that word? I king know class. That word. I don't know that word. King what? No. King class. King class. Um, uh, the that, title of I'm thinking we might be talking about is in deep. Royal Water, the one with the frog? Is that the one you're talking uh, about? No, he's, no, no, I'm, he's I'm not talking, talking about... about a, a, oh, okay. He's just explaining a it, word. Oh, okay. I, 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 what I want to try to say is um, it's it's simple um, to do a movie when you script dialogue. Because if you are funny and you script a funny dialogue, then the movie is funny. 
But if you want this without words, it's it's harder to do this. And it's like it's like a higher class of making movies, you know, um, um, a higher um, um, eine höhere, okay, ich spreche jetzt kurz Deutsch, ja, I'm talking German. Mm-hmm. Es ist eine höhere, um, I don't know even the German word now. <laughs> I'm thinking in English now, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just more complicated. It's, it's more... Uh, you have to work it, it harder makes... to get your, your feeling and your point across. Yeah, because you, you have to, to make it understandable without the dialogue. So this makes it more hard to, 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 to make mm-hmm. people follow the story. So I think this is, this is the, ah, I need this word. Okay, let, give, give me one second. Um, Königsklasse, anderes Wort. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, poor, hard, hard, hard. Maybe, maybe I, I remember um, the word, um, in a few minutes. Okay. Let's talk about something else. All right, well, we're going to, staying with the with the no dialogue in Deep Royal Water um, was just beautiful from beginning to end. Um, yeah, okay, thank the, you. <laughs> the scenic, your, your scenic is just amazing in all, your, in all your videos. The woodland areas, the waterfall effect was really cool. Not Lego, what but wow, what a great idea. Yeah. But what this a great was like, idea. like little Lametta from Christmas Trees. Oh, the right, blue, streamer. The blue, yeah, the blue stuff. What or the stuff you put on 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 Christmas trees? And this was in blue, and I thought, okay, let's use that for a waterfall. Uh, for now, I would try to do it in Lego, but at this time, it was there, and I just used it, you know. And it worked beautifully, it worked though. Well. It, it was really pretty. Um, <laughs> I loved it when the bridge broke, and you had that one Lego piece go down the river because it fell. Oh that, yes, that the little things too. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and I like the uh, the frog, the the large version of the frog, and then it would go back to the little small one one piece frog for you know the, you you switch scales, and I I really like that. I tell you what, I don't like the big frog. I think it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a certain shot when you, I think he first shows up and you see the castle in the background. He, he jumps onto the screen and opens his mouth and it. And you see the waterfall cool. in the background too. Yeah. It's pretty. Oh, <laughs> and I, I think I would, I would build this frog different now, but um, for that moment it was okay. But if, if I watch this movie now, or it's always, if we watch all the movies, you always find little things where you say, ah. If I would have done this different, then it would be a little bit better there and there and there. But I mean, in the same time, I don't watch my movies that often, but maybe every half year I go back on my YouTube timeline and I watch one or two all the movies. And then I think, wow, how was this done? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised then what all happened, you know, you, you, you did so many things and you forget them and then you, you go back to your timeline and see, oh, wow, oh, this was made and let's watch this. And then after that, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit proud about that, um, that things done. And in the same time, you see little flaws and say to yourself, okay, this, could have been better, but for this time when it was done, it was perfect. So it's okay then. So and you do need to be very proud um, of all of your work. You're you're going to be your Thanks. worst critic. Everybody is their own worst critic, but but your work is beautiful, and you should always be very proud of that. Also, in the same Thank- film, I liked the uh, the part uh, you did some masking, uh, the knight jumping up for the final attack against the the frog knight. Um, oh yes. The, did you do that all in like Photoshop? <laughs> I'm assuming since it was so long ago. I think it was Photoshop, and it was my first time. I tried out to uh, put something away. Um, have these two pictures, and then you use the razor and you put away the stones where it was on. Um, it was hard because I was uh, shooting this on on such a table. What you can turn. It was also from IKEA. Um, so uh, it was the first time I was trying this and, uh, it was really hard because I'm not a big guy in graphic programs and Photoshop and all that stuff. And, uh, it worked out okay, but I think, uh, right now I would make it more easy for myself. I'm really lazy in animating too. And I always try to find the best way 
how I can hide something that you don't have to see all the legs walking or um, I mean, it's like every one of us wants to finish the movie if you do something. And um, I'm really impressed of all these people. They do so, so fine animated things. And um, I know how to do this, but sometimes I'm then if I do something, I want to go forward and I don't want to frickle myself into the little, little things. And um, I'm happy then if it moves and um, then I try to find the best trick to make it easy for me, you know, that I don't have to animate everything, but it looks also good because you need, you have some cuts or you, you hide the, 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 the legs when he's walking uh, with a wall or whatever. So, yeah, I always try to make the things most easy for me to animate, but I'm also impressed by the people. They really, really put hours into one handshake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you mentioned earlier the desire to work in different um, scales, um, and it's been a few years since you've used the Homemaker figures, what you used in Bricks and Love and a few other things. Do you think you might use yeah. those figures again? Yes, absolutely. I love these homemaker uh, sets from the 70s. This is uh, beside the Coffee Corner series of houses from Lego. Uh, one of the things I really love to collect. I don't have everything what, what was um, made in the 70s and I think in the early 80s by Lego. Um, but I have one or two big boxes what I think are so rare and I hope they, if I ever will sell them, they give me... Uh, a flight to the States. <laughs> um, but, but I remember in my child Lego, there was a bit of Lego from my daddy because my parents were not, they were, my, my mom was 19 and I think my dad was like 21 when uh, I was born. And my Lego, what I got for birthdays or whatever was mainly the classic space uh, Lego stuff from the 80s. But I also had Lego from my daddy, uh, what came from the 60s or the late 50s. And I remember I had two of these big homemaker figures when I was a child. And I never thought about, oh, this is old stuff, what is like 10, 15 years uh, ago and not anymore um, um, uh, to sell. Uh, but when I started uh, collecting Lego again and uh, fetched uh, Lego uh, boxes from my mother, um, then I really went fast on eBay and bought like a kilo there and um, whatever, loose bricks. And then I found homemaker stuff. What is like a dollhouse and the scale is bigger and a lot of these sets they uh, put on the market uh, were especially for girls. and. The style is the style of a dollhouse. And I thought, okay, cool. Then you have a bathroom. Then you have um, a living room and the piano with a little chair. It looks so great. And there's the TV with that cool, stylish 70s uh, chair. And so I bought some of these original packages I found. And I have a little collection of that uh homemaker stuff and i think yes this maybe could be uh, my entry for uh 2018 Steinerei, if oh. you if, if you know tell me this um okay. i i have okay. to find a way how you can make them walk uh because you know these heads are big like um a two uh, a basic two to two brick and um the body is like uh, a two to two brick and um, if you buy different legs, then maybe you can change the whole figure and it looks like it's working. I think this is worth a try. Um, like I told you, maybe maybe on the weekend I try to uh, let's let let work such a homemaker fig, and maybe around this suddenly there spins uh, itself around a little story. Who knows? That would be wonderful. I I loved um, Bricks and Love, the wedding of the two 1970s Lego homemaker figures. Um, her wedding dress oh, yeah. was beautiful. That that just looks so real. Uh, the church was great, and you did mouth movements on them as well. Uh, what I did what mouth movements? You made their mouths move. Oh yes. Oh, this this was also. I think this was made in Photoshop, and it 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 was. Yeah. If you if you see movies uh, within the last uh, years made by younger people, they do mouth uh, movements with uh, minifigs. It it looks so perfect, and they use um, 
the big the big software for it um, what I never um, tried out like after effects and all that stuff um, I think I, I tried out to do this with uh, Photoshop and I'm, I'm not quite happy with that it, it works but it's not perfect like I ever wanted it I think after that I never tried to uh, beside that uh, most stupid video on YouTube what is another uh, program what is called uh, what was it called um, crazy talk and uh, but this is totally different to make uh, the, the, than, than the after effects stuff to make um, mouse uh, mouth lip syncs but I was not really happy with the mouse stuff but I tried I tried it out it was it was the movie where I wanted to try to make the the lip sync and 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 mouth movements uh, but if I watch it now, I think it's it's a little bit cheap. If if mm -hmm. I I would do it different now, but like I told you, I'm not I'm not an expert, or I I never tried out After Effect, and I think this is a big 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 machine if you know what to do with it. But um, I tried out uh, the the Mac version of it, what is uh, Motion. Uh, I think you could do something like this inside there, but uh, yeah, it's also it's it's like a big, 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 big car, and uh, you think it's too much uh, PS to to drive for you. <laughs> so, well, I was very happy with it, and the wedding vows were adorable. And uh, no, I I loved the whole the whole video. It was great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I have to watch it again. Maybe I like the yeah, more, please more do. After. Ah. It's After cool. you, you like it, maybe I like it too, then. I do. I loved it. <laughs> All right. So, which one? I think um, I ended up discovering you a few years back, and obviously the video would have been several years old by that time, but the farm, uh, the Lego Santa and Star Wars, that's, I think, oh. where I first discovered you on YouTube and uh, I subscribed to you right away. Um, there were some neat neat things that happened in that. Um, you obviously do a lot of uh, turntable shots. Is that sound correct? Where the whole set's turning on a table? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said before, it's 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 like a little uh, IKEA plate um, was was like I don't know fifteen dollars, and it's for for the food place. If you put it on your table, you can put up the cheese ah. and the, the and then you can turn it and. Say okay, take some of this cheese and burp, you turn it okay. around. And um, I use this all the time. I want to do um, a turntable uh, movement. And on on the side, there's um, also uh, a liner with centimeters on it, so I can exactly move it for like a millimeter or two or whatever. Um, yeah, these all. In, in, especially in the farm, I think my my aim in the farm was to try out green screening, because uh, or, or chroma keying, because there was this little uh, Santa Claus um, sleigh I was building, and I thought, okay, let's try to make this flying around. And then I took a big green uh, cup, uh, cardboard and put it in front and uh, tried out at this time in it was iMovie um, and not the iMovie what is now on the Apple Macintosh computers it was the old iMovie from 2004 what was perfect for me for years doing movies but it really went straight to um, to, to, to problems if you wanted to go deeper in it, like chroma keying because iMovie itself had no chroma keying this time, so you had to look the web for some special plugins uh, for iMovie. And I bought a package from, I think it was some Swiss programmers, what were able to put uh, to do chroma keying. And uh, if I compare it now, I'm cutting um, since years now with Final Cut, um, Final Cut uh, X now, and this is so comfortable just to key out something because you press one or two buttons and then you really can tune it up with a few sliders and the first time i tried this on imovie it was really 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 hard because imovie and this time i think uh, the imovie um, at the moment um, on a mac computer 
still is nonlinear. Um, so if you wanted to have this, you have you had to render it into the clip, then you had to replace the clip with the rendered one, and you were not able to go back uh, with one undo button to to just uh, if if it was not good. So it was really complicated for me doing these um, really interesting things in movies uh, in the first time. But also this was starting with a test, doing a chroma keying thing, let Santa fly. And out of this, then there suddenly was a story, okay, he's landing, there's a stormtrooper and uh, asking Santa, hey, where do you want to go? Santa is saying, hey, I want to go there and rest a little bit. And he says, no, no, you can't. There's a big party of uh, Darth Vader, and this is a restricted area. Uh, so there's not a big, big story behind it, but uh, it was a test. And on top of this test, there came this little crazy story. I think this movie was made in, I think, one week or so. Um, not a big thing, but it was in the first thing, it was just for me to test out chroma keying what really was a pain with uh, iMovie in this time. Well, chroma keying is just tough with Lego anyway because they're so reflective. You've really got to be careful about what your Legos are reflecting um, when absolutely, you're shooting a film absolutely. with a shot. Yeah. And there's, it's a real, it's a real uh, task to try to get it to not uh, reflect bad. I, I, I never used so much chroma keying in my, in my clips. Um, beside that problem, there are a lot of other problems. Uh, most problem for me is on my IKEA uh, table. Uh, if you want to do a really big shot with a town, um, and the camera from the table is like, let's say, one meter away uh, to get all the scene, then the green screen or the blue screen behind needs to be much bigger. It, mean, it needs to be like two or three meters, and. Um, one wall in my in my animation room now is completely painted in green because I thought to avoid this problem, I just paint this green. And if I needed uh, white or black or whatever, then I just put the table to another wall. But one wall now really is completely green. Um, like, but like I told you, there's not so much king in my in my movies, um, but. If if it's possible to use it, then um, yeah, I, I I love it. If it's if it's working out good on the background later, but uh, also there was on on eye water we tried out something with um, a scene from uh, Egypt uh, people or old Egypt with pyramid pyramids and all that stuff, and uh, later we 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 keep that stuff and we this was so. Um, okay, I have to check the word. It was so... Uh, I hope this work, word works mm -hmm. in English. Uh, he's, he's giving me the same word in German and English. Frantic. Frantic? Is that a word? Frantic? No. Too yeah, much stuff frantic? going on? If, if, if the, the edges of the keying look really crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that says it right there. There Sparkly you go. Sparkly and just, you see a lot of yeah. artifacts. Yeah, and you have these little pixels, and, yeah. and if, if, if it's moving, then it's like shaking or whatever. And all that came out in that, and we, we put out the whole the whole thing out of iMovie then because it didn't work. And, um, yeah, it's it's also the problem with the lightning. You need to have a good light to, uh, to have all your uh, blue or green... Uh, in, in a good um, in a good light and and in the same time you need a good light in front of on the on the set so you know how it is if you just have a little room and not like a big 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 production hall um, and thousands of lights hanging around then you really go you come fast to 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 the edge to do something to the end and you're not able to do it because the room is just too small for doing it then. Yeah, I believe you used a, um, a blue screen for your Infinite uh, video, uh, Steinery uh, 2014. Steinerei. And Steinerei. 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 <laughs> um, and uh, I thought your Chroma King worked really well in there. Um, did you? Yeah, yeah, it worked out perfectly there because there was not much green inside the sets. It was more like the sand on the floor and 
Um, uh, also, I, I focused uh, the camera on the object, so the green um, on the background anyway was very blurry, so mm -hmm. it worked out perfectly there. I don't know why. I think this was the first time I was using um, uh, the chroma keying stuff on uh, Final Cut X in this uh, movie, and it, it it really it surprised me. It was click click and it was gone. That's, so that's great. This, yeah, this this was yeah. Let's say um, a step forward and do you, for for me. Do you still have sand left over, kind of falling off the table? Did, were you able to clean all the sand up? It's still in my, uh, it's still in my underpants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was one shot you did uh, where the puddle dried up and the fish was left. Did you shoot that in reverse order? Uh, repeat the question, please. The the fish scene where the p puddle. Oh yes, the fish, the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the fish in the water and uh, sand. Yes. Did it you was... shoot that forward or backwards? It was uh, put backwards. Otherwise, it would not uh, be possible to do that. There was um, the fish. Um, no, the, no, there was first the sand. Then I put in the sand a little hole. Um, I filled the hole with all the round little uh, glassy blue Lego uh, bricks. And then I put the fish on top. And I animated the fish swimming backwards. And um, then I put away uh, partly, partly these little white, uh, blue uh, bricks to make it look like um, it's uh, going away. No, no, no. Drying up. Am I, where? I think I tell you crap. <laughs> how, how was I doing it? It's you started um, with just the fish and you added the water, correct? Correct. Okay. So yeah, that that, that was the way. Well. And la later it was reversed, so it looks like the water is um, draining um, through the water and going away. Um, yeah, because otherwise um, it 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 would had it, it would not um, be possible to do that, or you just have all the sand uh, mixing up into the water. So in this case, uh, it was uh, made backwards. Yeah. Well, that was a smart decision. It really worked well. Otherwise, uh, it would not have been possible to do it. Yeah, that's what I mean. You have to always find the easiest way for you to do, do something. That's what what make trick film. Say, do you say trick film in English? Trick film. Hmm. Uh, we say trick. So, so animated movies in Germany are called trick film. Trick is like the trick and trick film. So it's okay. it's a tricky film, uh, or you make you you need tricks to do it and. Um, yeah, that's that's the, the things you have to find that you can make something make possible um, and and make it um, yeah that it works out. Well, it well it works. Yeah, it definitely, <laughs> so, definitely work. Um, um I kind of want to go back into um, some of your audio stuff. You have some great music on SoundCloud, and I know you do a lot of your own music if um, in your videos. Uh, from time to time, yes. Uh, I, I I come from the audio side, what I, to I told you before. Um, I, I'm a sound designer on the radio station at the moment, mostly. So I produce together with the guys sitting on the machine or on Pro Tools, um, trailers for the radio station, for, for either the shows or we present um, um, bands like the Rolling Stones coming to Stuttgart or whatever. And then I make a trailer um, for telling the radio listeners, hey, come on, the Stones are coming, the date. Um, so I write uh, the, the text for the trailers. I, 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 I speak them. I, I, um, I'm on the microphone. And then we produce these trailers or jingles. That's my main work I do on the radio station. Uh, beside sometimes writing a little comedy or uh, helping people finding ideas. That's a lot, uh, a big part. If people don't know what to do in their comedy, um, they ask me and then we talk and then we find together something and go crazy and suddenly there's the idea. And um, sometimes, not very often at the moment, I do journalistic things. Um, I'm not hosting a show for myself at the moment uh, because I said to myself within the last years, 
I want to work a little more in the background. I want to produce. I want to um, do background work. And uh, there's people, they are better presenters than me. So let present them the radio shows. Um, but I also would like, I don't know, one day I would like today uh, to have a Saturday night radio show again or during the night uh, radio stuff. So it's a little bit different than the, the radio host in the American radio because the German radio more is like a, like a journalistical thing. We have news, we have um, interviews. I think you have that too, but the, the radio host in, in the States, uh, if I think about Howard Stern, um, is more selecting its own music and he's playing maybe um, a special color of music in his show. And we have an uh, adult contemporary radio um, um, uh, broadcasting thing. So our music is from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and a little bit of today's pop music. But it's more like people, I say it for people like from 40 to 60 years old, what mm -hmm. uh, is not the, the uh, entertaining primary thing. It's more like information giving information about what's happening around the world what's happening uh here in germany or in baden-württemberg what is the, the 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 country the part of germany i live baden-württemberg where stuttgart is and we broadcast for baden-württemberg uh, primarily and so we try to find the stories what 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 happens here uh, and yeah so I come from the sound stuff and uh, within the years I do radio um, and production for radio. I collected so many sound effects and I bought a lot of CDs um, from Hollywood Edge, what is really um, big collections of CDs with sound effects. And I always had these CDs um, for production, for doing um, radio plays or comedy and all that stuff. And this really helped me when I started doing the animated movies because uh, suddenly you have your moving picture and then you know, hey, I have so many sound effects. Okay, let's put the sound effects on the right key part of the movie. And then it's not only, wow, Lego is moving, it's, wow, Lego is moving and the whole world suddenly lives because, you know, sound is 50% uh, of the film. And I, I'm coming from sound and I put my sound on the movie, on my own movie. And then suddenly you think, wow, this works. And um, I'm not a really learned musician. I can play no instrument. I tried to play a little guitar when I was um, a, a child. Uh, but this teacher at the guitar school, he gave me some... Uh, lines with notes and told me okay next week you have to learn this and play this and i kind of came home and said to my mom how should i do this i can't read notes and then she put me out of this thing because it it did not work i was playing a little bit at home and i still know a few riffs on the guitar but i never really played um an instrument so that i can say i'm a real musician but um when i was like 10, 11, 12 years, I had my first uh, personal computers with Windows and the very first programs um, playing around with sounds, with uh, Vox sounds, it was uh, wave sounds, and then they came the first Cubase programs where you were able to do MIDI production and put your keyboard on the computer with a connection and a sampler. And so I experimented with sampling um, and i had um, it was called an akai s1000 sampler what was really state of the art in the 80s uh, early 90s in the production studios for sampling and i was experimenting with loops and i really loved hip-hop music when i was uh, like 15 16 17 years old so the old school hip-hop music from the 80s and uh, that was for me um, the thing to go into music production because um, you don't need to play an instrument uh, in a good way if you know how to arrange and play around with loops and samples and sounds. And 
also today, if I produce music, it's more like um, experimenting with, uh, with 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 little sounds. And um, I would love to have a keyboard in front of me or a piano and maybe a good wine and drink it and then play it like a piano, piano jazz thing. But I would not be able to do that, but I would love it. Um, but yeah, I try to produce music just, just by try, trying out what fits together and also playing melodies, um, not by playing it with one hand, but with one finger and trying out, okay, let's try this melody. Uh, okay, it's not the right note you uh, played on the keyboard. Then you go back to the software and then, then you can rearrange it by uh, the mouse and suddenly you have the melody. Um, and yeah, for, for the uh, brick films, I was using either older stuff I did or I started um, yeah, also composing uh, with the computer. Um, and yeah, it's fun. I, I have always, for me, it's like I have different phases. My um, phases, is that the right word? If you yeah, have a phase is. of liking doing music for weeks and then suddenly you... You don't like it anymore and then you say okay i have to do something different now for the next weeks because i'm tired of uh, moving around minifix and so sometimes i have a face uh, within the last weeks i started doing music again on my ipad because i really love at the moment to play around with a few uh, apps on the ipad doing music jamming around uh, with my fingers not having a mouse in my hand and moving the mouse onto a special button and press it and then doing this and doing that and just directly being with the finger on a sound and pressing it and it comes and then you have the the edit line and you can trigger the notes with your finger in it and this is really fun and i also love just jamming around with some tools where you just uh where you have within minutes you have you have a jam session what really grooves or maybe sometimes not <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I like this um, but it also could happen that if I do this for weeks then suddenly I don't like it to do for a whole month because I like the whole quietness and uh, silence it's sometimes if I come home from work uh, because if you work the whole day with sound and sound design and swooshes and impacts and um, it's all the time something around you and people talk to you uh, sometimes i'm coming home and i'm here and doing something and i notice for hours later oh i have no music on but i don't miss it and in, in this moment you know so it's it's always like sometimes this sometimes this for 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 uh for a fall for a few weeks doing this and then suddenly for a few weeks uh, doing that. I was really interested within the last years in 3D printing. And uh, last year in October, I uh, bought an Amazon, uh, a cheap uh, Chinese uh, 3D printer. And then uh, the next five, six week, I, weeks, I was really going uh, or trying to go deep into 3D printing. So I'm interested in so many things. It's I think lifetime is too short to to, um, to everything. get everything and to find everything or to yeah to 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 really go deep into so many things and so many possibilities we have uh, nowadays and today. That's also true. with the technique and the digital stuff and that. Yeah, I agree. Making music though is I mean if we had the time to do that, we would love to do that. Dave is really good. Like you said, with putting the beats and the sounds and everything together, and then I play the keyboard. So yeah. we, we really don't have time to do that very often, but it would be nice to to just have the free time to just create and enjoy. Plus, my computer, relaxing. my computer that had Pro Tools, uh, no longer works. So oh, okay, uh, but oh, that's bad. I, yeah, if you if you can play a couple of bars on a keyboard with Pro and then record it into Pro Tools, you can make some music that's okay. <laughs> but uh. One of the songs that uh, you made that stood out, I was listening to a bunch of them uh, yesterday, was the one with Charlie Chap Chaplin's voice um, from, I think, 1939. Um, you put a beat to it, and then later on you made, a, I guess, a brick film called Peace uh, yes, with a yes. Pagano puppet, which was really cool. Yeah. 
it's it's the Pagano uh, puppet size, and um, I think in in the Bricks journal there was uh, years ago there was the instruction um, uh, with an article about David Pagano. Um, yeah, there was this uh, article about David Pagano in, in one of the brick uh, issues and also the instruction. And I said, oh, yes, cool. I love this figure. I built David Pagano's figure and I was building his original figure. <clears throat> in the same time, <clears throat> I was building um, uh, Tintin, um, what is an... Uh, co comic cartoon from Belgium and I think it's not so popular in the States but uh, in Europe it's it's a really popular old um, uh, cartoon series with Tintin and um, Snowy uh, what is the dog of Tintin and I think they have around like 40 books uh, with um, a lot of different stories with Tintin and I was building like five or four six different figures in this size size um, with uh, in the look of Tintin and the figures from this cartoon and one of these uh, people inside the cartoon is two uh, police guys they are called in German Schulze and Schulze I think in English they're called Thompson and Thompson mm -hmm. and um, they really uh, have the outfit and the look like Chaplin so the only thing I had to change is the head and it was funny with this little movie piece with uh, Charlie Chaplin sitting in front of a piano and playing and the speech of uh, Charlie Chaplin, um, I think you're right with 1936 or something. Um, it was from the uh, Chaplin movie, The Great Dictator, uh, what he made to make fun about Adolf Hitler from Germany, um, the great dictator or the bad dictator. And uh, Chaplin made this parody of, of uh, Hitler um, with uh, the big dictator. And there is one speech at the end where he tries uh, to find uh, a balance for people living in peace. And the funny thing about this movie is that the song was first. I was playing around on my iPad um, with um, an app from Cork, what is called Gadget, what is really, really cool to produce uh, music on, on, an, on an iPad. And I was making uh, the song just for fun. There was no thinking about, hey, this could be a movie. And uh, the song was not even finished. And I was also building, I think it was a year ago, um, uh, but before that uh, movie was made, I was making, <clears throat> beside that, Charlie Chaplin figure, a big piano where he can sit in front. And I always thought, let's animate Charlie Chaplin playing the piano. But I had no song. And there was also suddenly there was, I made the song and then I thought, okay, in this song there's a piano. Can I use this song for making Chaplin playing the piano? And I thought, yes, maybe this is the song. It's, it's a modern like like a dance music song or like a house music uh, song with just this piano riff going ding 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 <clears throat> um, little frog in my um <laughs> back from your and, <clears throat> and and then i thought how can i combine um chaplin with the piano and that it's not only him sitting in front of the piano and doing all the time like the same riff because I'm not a piano player. So there's only this little ding, ding, ding riff and a little beside lines, uh, but, but not, not like a real big uh, compo composition. And then I remembered this speech from the great dictator, uh, dictator. And I thought, okay, let's check this if this is on the web. Sure, it was on YouTube. And I thought, okay, let's try to integrate this speech into the song. So the step was then um, that I uh, took the speech from Chaplin and uh, put it on um, Logic Audio, what is similar to Pro Tools, and arranged the speech onto the beat so that it works like he is not rapping it, but that is like 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 uh, in the timing of the beat 
And then there was the song with the speech of uh, Chaplin. And then I took the song into the timeline of the animation uh, software and started uh, animating Chaplin. So it's only two little scenes inside. It's either he's standing beside the uh, piano um, or he's sitting in front of the piano, pressing the piano keys. Or uh, the other um, scene is he's standing in front of uh, old looking microphones um, uh, doing his speech. Uh, he did. And yeah, this is how this movie um, came up. It was the, the, the idea what I had for years when I made this figure with uh, um, uh, Tintin, Thompson, Thompson and Thompson, what then one of these Thompson guys changed to Charlie Chaplin. And uh, the idea, let's put Charlie Chaplin in this kind of size of Lego figure in front of a Lego piano and let him play the piano. What was for me always too cheesy only to let him play the piano. And, uh, and so I, I took the, 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 the speech of uh, Charlie Chaplin to use in it. I don't know if I was uh, really um, allowed to do this because I think uh, the children of Chaplin, they do still have the rights on it, but um, nobody else ever uh, sued me. So. Yeah. Okay. I I hope this um They probably loved still, it, that's why. I hope this still will be after you um publish the uh, the the podcast. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Um speaking of the Tintin um Pagano puppets, have you animated those ever? Um do you plan on animating them into something? I planned to do it, but uh, that's the next problem. What is the story behind? Ah. Um, and the big size is also really challenging. If you want to move these big, big, um, figures, I don't know if you ever built one on your own. You tried it once. It's really, it's really fragile. So to make this walk, um, is really hard. And I would love to do a Tintin Lego brick movie. I think a lot of people would love that. Um, also, uh, um, because they know these figures, um, but I never came over the process of making a picture with all these figures and uh, putting it on the, on on websites like mock pages or whatever, um, just to present these Pagano Tintin figures. Um, yeah, but I think I I won't uh, redo. Our original Tintin uh, cartoon story. I I think it it should should be an own little Tintin adventure then. And um, till now there was never the the super idea where I said, oh yeah, that's it, let's do it. And I mean to do a two or three minute movie is is also hard to make a story really uh, short. Um, and it's also hard to do a 20 minutes movie. So I don't know. The figures are um, in the room. They are not standing around. They are in, in a little case. But maybe someday uh, I will use them. I use them on TV uh, to, to show what is pos uh, possible with Lego, uh, what what kind of sizes you can use. But I never really animated them beside the Charlie Chaplin figure. We were about to ask that. Uh, right. You did a TV interview. Was uh, in puncto? Does that sound right? Yeah, in puncto. Yes, correct. Yeah. And have you done any other interviews on TV uh, with any other um, television stations? Yeah, there were different telev uh, television stations. I was with Sandra um, uh, on a live TV show, and we were talking about brick filming in general and our movies. Um, I was in that uh, In Puncto show, uh, what was hosted by um, Nicole Köster, who is a colleague of mine um, now. And she was hosting this In Puncto show, what um, showed people with uh, uh, doing crazy stuff or from sports till animation, whatever. And uh, we also had uh, a lot of workshops um, beside the TV stuff uh, where we showed uh, kids how to animate. Um, 
but this has nothing to do now with the TV store, uh, show. I don't know why I'm talking about this now. Well, yeah, actually, I think just... we're, we're about to ask about that. Didn't you uh, do something involved with art exhibits um, in several different cities or maybe in one city a few years uh, back? Art, yes, yes. Um, it started with, um, with these big Lego conventions. They also are here in Germany. Um, within the last 10 years, they really... Uh, started being everywhere and the adult fan scene um, had all these little exhibitions uh, with Lego stuff and the first times uh, the brick film or brick film itself was presented um, the biggest uh, event in Germany I think is Lego Fan Welt what also is uh, in the States called Lego Fan World and in Cologne um there's every two years the Lego Fan World, Lego Fan Welt, and one part of that big, 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 big hall is hosted by Lego itself, and the other part is uh, presented by uh, adult, adult fans of Lego. And um, I think in the second Lego Fan Welt, they asked uh, us brick filmers if we want to have a little booth there to present brick film. Nice. And there were not only me, it was like a crew of like five, six different brick filmers from Germany. They uh, presented uh, their artwork, their movies on a screen, uh, brought little sets. And um, beside that, uh, we we just uh, helped kids when they came and asked, uh, how is this done? And we had a little station there where they were able to try out uh, animation. And within the last years, especially on Lego Fanwelt, it it grew bigger and bigger. And uh, within the last two events, uh, the company hosting the Lego part for Lego is an agency what uh, does it for Lego here. Um, they asked us if we can do this on the Lego side of uh, the the big um, uh, show. And it was officially wanted by Lego that brick film is a fixed part for kids there. So we had a lot of stations and tables then um, uh, the last years, uh, like five tables with um, also uh, tablets, um, make it easy as possible for the kids. Uh, no cables hanging around, no tripods uh, where you can uh, bump onto. So there was... Um, a little self-made stand for um, the tablet uh, made out of Lego Duplo bricks, what was taped uh, with blue tag on, on the table. Um, we had uh, little uh, houses or told the kids if they came to us and asked, can we try it out? And we said, okay, we have a timetable for you in two hours. Um, come back and if you want, buy, uh, build something on the big, big, big uh, Lego tables here and bring it and then you can try out animation. So either either they brought their own um, little builded stuff or they used just uh, a car and a house. And these kids really loved it. And I think in, in these two or three days we did it, it's always like from Friday to Sunday. I think it was like having 150 or 200 kids uh, in this time um, showing animation and I think they had always like time for a half hour or for like 40 minutes to to play around on the table and it was so impressive what these kids did in this time um, I think four years ago I made a little movie out of it what is uh, on my YouTube channel where you see all these little 20 10 20 30 second little clips the kids made it's not perfect, but it's it's that charming thing when we think back about our first times uh, trying out animation, and um, on 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 a few movies, it's it's going deeper into animation because the minifig is jumping from the rooftop of a house, going into the water, and the water um, is going. Uh, okay, let me check the word in English. Uh, Ripple. R squirt squirting oh, squirt. okay splash squirting splashing yeah splashing <laughs> splashing with bricks from the um from the water and, and you really think how did they came to this idea in this short time 
but they they really understand really fast how it works if you tell them press this button you make a picture move your object press this button make a picture and here's a play button and you can see what you did and they really understand really fast what's going on the only problem mostly um, and the most question after that was <laughs> how can we make it slower <laughs> because the timing, the understanding for timing was not there. So if you tell them, okay, if the car wants to drive um, in two seconds um, from there to there, then you need uh, like 30 pictures. And they do like four steps and do four pictures and the car is driving like, <laughs> and it's uh, gone. And, and, and then they ask, can we make it slower now that the car is going slower? And you need to tell them, no, you really can't, because if you do it slower, then it's only like four pictures. You should have made more pictures. So they really went fast in the understanding of how to shoot that and, and that it's uh, the step-by-step the -step moving of an object. But the timing itself was um, yeah, not so fast to understand. Um, but... I hope we, we, we made a few more brick filmers and um, a few more people or kids um, into filmmaking with that. And it was always great fun uh, doing this. Within the last uh, three years, uh, four, two, two, four years, I told you it's uh, every two years in Cologne, I was doing these workshops mostly with uh, Cornelius Koch, <clears throat> um, who is a German brick filmer and also um, co-founder of the German uh, brick board. Um, and he now is studying film and uh, is a film student, um, although he's, he's, uh, he finishes uh, uh, film studying. He's doing his master film now, uh, what uh, is nearly finished. What is not a Lego movie, it's a really, I, I've seen it so, and it's so beautiful, it's a real, stop motion animated movie with uh, big figures um, made uh, out of not clay but uh, you know this um, amateurs and uh, real clothing and uh, the whole set is big and you need something to make out of wood and crazy stuff you find on the streets to make it look like a technical industrial uh, bad guys base and really crazy and um, I think I, I think a lot of uh, brick filmers not only from Germany um, these guys when they were like 12 13 14 years in in the beginning of brickfilms.com and started doing brick films I think a lot of them uh, wanted to go into the film business and I think a few of them really made it so this is this is cool if you think about that if I would have been, uh, 12 years old with all the technique uh, people had in the year 2004 what is not exactly the same we have now in the year 2018 um, oh my god would, would, what would I have done when I would have had all this technical stuff we would have now when I was a kid fascinating true, but yeah it's, it's, it's so cool if people find their passion and go through it and, and, and be inspired from each other and try out and find, find stuff to, to um, tell stories and to make movies. Yeah. In, in, a, in a really easy way without having a big budget uh, and needing a lot of actors, um, what you have to pay. And yeah. So Lego is so cool to, especially for kids just to to find that point how movies are made and what media does and also how you can manipulate media by by cutting something and and showing only this little part of a of a scene i mean this also is a problem nowadays to manipulate things because we don't see the whole thing mm -hmm. true no i mean i think it's great how uh you know, people like you and, and other talented brick filmers are helping kids and keeping keeping it going. It's such a wonderful community. Um, we all want to help each other. And um, it's just evident from the movies that are coming out now and the, and the more kids that are getting into it. And I, and I love it. I love seeing 
more and more people get into brick filming. Well, it's a great stepping stone um, to, to get your feet wet in, in making cinema. And, and yeah. then people move on. And, and, and I really look forward to seeing one of these one of these people that we know become a, a filmmaker uh, and make a big budget movie. It would just be awesome. Yeah. You said stepping stone. This is the word. Uh. It's a stepping stone. Yes, it's it's just a uh, like the first step in baby in... steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understood it. This wasn't. I, I learned a new word. It's ah. good. <laughs> it's a stepping stone for 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 people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I believe um, it... the person that made the uh, regular show, a cartoon on uh, one of the cartoon networks. Um, he back when he was a kid, um, he made Lego movies, and it, they that that was probably in the late '90s, so they were probably pretty terrible, but. That's where he started, and now he's making, you know, a, a, a television show that's on Cartoon Network. Cool, yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's uh, and it's so easy to 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 go into it um, because you don't need a lot of space, and you can just uh, try out, and you can leave it for weeks if you have that place and don't need it for your homework. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's fantastic. It was also, it was when I started uh, with animating and um, I think within the first half year, I was not being on Bricks in Motion uh, mm -hmm. on, on BrickFilms.com. But when I found the community then and all the people um, doing this and you, 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 you went deeper in it and uh, you were reading all these discussions about, hey, how have you done this and how is this made? And I mean... But for 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 not English speaking English speaking people, um, um, when English is not your mother language, it's always hard to to read everything and understand everything. Um, but it really was cool. I was first on BrickFilms.com before I was on the German Brickboard, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I think all these people starting uh, in the early two thousands uh, with uh, brick filming because computers were fast enough to um, make it possible to uh, play uh, these little pictures in, in in a really good way that it's a movie later and, and the, the even the um, editing programs for um, video were better than let's say in the late 90s or in, in the mid 90s it was all crap and um, all, all the cameras on, on, on the first cell phones, were not able to shoot a good movie or it was like a VGA uh, mm -hmm. size format. So not about thinking, not, 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 no way to think about using this stuff uh, this time for, for brick filming, but then uh, better webcams in, in the, in the 2001, two, three, four years. And I think also the, the Lego movie maker set itself made, made a step, uh, for a, a few people uh, going into trying out uh, animation with Lego. I never had this um, when I started, but uh, later on, uh, a few years later, when I started brick filming, I bought this set on eBay. Um, I never used this camera because it was like VGA graphics, um, but the booklet written, um, I think it was uh, written together with uh, Steven Spielberg. It was great. Also, I was like, in the mid thirties um, when I started this, but there were so many things and it was written for kids and so good written that also for me, there was a new understanding for film because I never was into filmmaking before. And I never thought about what are all the steps doing a good cinema and movie. Um, but then suddenly uh, you understand it and, also, such a little book from the, the, the Lego Movie Maker set, what was written for kids, opened my eyes for, for special things I've never uh, thought about before. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's really great. Uh, what, what all was mm, made it happen um, in the two, 2003, four, five years. And the community inspired itself and for me, it was always great to watch a movie and to find something new, what I've never seen before. Uh, either it was like objects flying through the air and uh, whatever. And you always wanted to try that on your own. That was always the, um, 
the motor, the motor, motor to to make yourself going forward, you know, to to go deeper in it, to make it better in the next movie, to try out this, 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 and being inspired by all these people making the same crazy stuff you do. And I think there were only a few people they really came out of the film business doing this, like the spit your face uh, guys. Mm -hmm. right. um, I think they were film students when they made their brick films uh, in commission for Lego. Uh, but yeah, at this at this time, these were the most impressive movies for me because they looked so professional and and great. And in, in one minute, whatever twenty seconds, and it's so many things happening and so perfect in the cinematographic way. And when I when I've seen this, I thought. However, can you be as good as this? It never would work, I thought, because they were nearly perfect. Yeah, definitely a lot of people. It's definitely mind blowing, but you learn a lot from like getting to work with other people, getting to speak with other brick filmers, and um, and you learn something from everyone. And yeah, absolutely. And everybody's absolutely. work is is special to you know to themselves. So it's nice everybody has their own style, and they're each all enjoyable for that reason. Yeah, it okay. was the same with uh, Cornelius Koch, uh, the brick filmer from Germany, uh, with with whom I'm working together with Eye Water, the movie Eye Water. He he lived in my house for a few weeks because he had um, and uh, let me check the words. I know it, but it's a long practicum. He made a. No placement. That's not right. If if someone works for a few weeks in a company to check something out, that's um, uh, sabbatical. Can you repeat? Sabbatical? Were you internship. or vacation? Internship. Internship. Oh, intern, yes. Right. Yeah, he was for an internship on my radio station for sound design. Nice. And so he lived in my house for a few weeks while this internship was and. In this time, we thought, okay, hey, you live here, um, you're you're here, the Lego is here, come on, let's do a movie together for Steinerei 2000 and whatever. And then we started creating this eye water uh, story, and we really thought we can manage all that in two weeks. It never happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took us over one year to finish that movie, and um, the problem is he lives not in Stuttgart, he lives in Mainz at the moment. He's originally from Berlin. Um, and in this time he was here, we started to script the story, to write a story uh, itself. And we started, I think we started building uh, a few little props, but not a big thing. And so we needed to find out where the time is when he maybe was able to come here for another week or just for a longer weekend that we can make this movie really uh, happen and to finish it. So that the whole thing took us, I think it was more than one and a half year, if you uh, really take the, the sound and uh, the uh, post-production. Yeah, uh, Cornelius, um, what I wanted to say is that Cornelius, as a film student in this time, he he taught uh, taught me he he taught me he, he taught me mm -hmm. taught you yes. mm -hmm. yeah he taught me a lot of about, about filmmaking uh, although I was doing brick films since years there were still things I was never thinking about and especially in scripting um, the the story uh, there were a lot of new things for me and. Um, that's what I mean with, with the inspiration and, and you, you always learn, you learn your whole life. That's part of life is learning and um, always part of life is, is experimenting with things and trying out things and uh, yeah, trying out art or what you, what, what your heart wants to be. And, and, and yeah. And so even for me, as a non film guy coming from the sound and um, having brick filming uh, for myself for like 10 years it was another step to work with a younger younger uh, guy who is then or who was then into uh, the filmmaking business as a student to even bring me um, a lot more 
uh, inside um, filmmaking stuff. I think my English gets better and better. Could it, can this be? It definitely, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's great to work with other people and get different perspectives, especially different ages. Um, you're always going to learn something, and, and both from each other, and, and that's a yeah. wonderful thing. And we were also um, thrilled and honored to be a part of that as well, voicing. And uh, it, it was a oh yeah, thank thank you, thank, thanks all, thanks all the guys for voice acting. That was really great. And that was really great. Kim, you helped never, with some of the translations. Yeah, I think uh, Robin um, in Germany uh, did yeah. the most uh, heavy lifting on that. So we definitely want to give kudos out to um, to Robin for uh, assisting yeah, with yeah. some of that translation. Let me say something to Robin in Deutsch. Robin, wenn du uns gerade hörst, vielen, vielen, vielen Dank nochmal für die Hilfe. So this was German and it, it was like, uh, Robin, if you listen to us, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for helping. I will share that with him. He will appreciate that very much. He and I still keep in touch. Um, uh, what about a little German uh, course for you? Um, if you ever come to Germany in the Lego store, you need to buy something, then you, you can't because you can't, you don't know any German words. Do you? Uh, like two. Gu guten Tag. <laughs> That's about yeah, it. Yeah, you can go into the Lego shop and you say Guten Tag. That, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Lego so probably you Lego. Buy? I tell you the German word. <laughs> <laughs> Lego is probably Lego in German, correct? Lego, Lego. Yeah. Lego, there you Lego. go. You make the, the, the E is a little longer. Lego. 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 Yeah. Okay. If you want to buy, uh, the, if you're asking for the cheapest set they have, you say, was ist das billigste Lego Set, das Sie haben? Oh, you know what? I did know something else watching your videos this morning. I I noticed you said "Was ist das?" Because actually, my mom used to say that. You know, what is what is this? "Was ist das?" And I I noticed you saying that, and I recognized it. Can you repeat this? I I have <laughs> again, please. Was ist das? Ah, wusstest du? Yeah. Wusstest du? Oh, wusste. Well, uh, my my mom used to say "Wusstest du?" She didn't pronounce it right. It's like it's it's something like "Do you remember?" or, or "What is uh, this?" Have, have you ever known or something like this? Do, do you know? Did you ever knew? Uh, did, did you ever know that something like this? Wusstest du das? So I um, I recognize that it brought back childhood memories for me. Your your mom was German. No, but she knew some German words, and even though she obviously didn't pronounce it right, it was still something she would say, and uh, so it brought back okay. brought back nice memories for me. Interesting. Wusstest du? Yeah. <laughs> Where Dave and I were trying to be very mindful, both of running out of battery and taking up too much of your time, because you probably haven't even had dinner yet. You have so many amazing videos to talk about, so we're we're trying to. It's like, okay, what do we need to get in? Um, I, I want to get in the 802.701 <clears throat> based on the H.G. Wells time machine. Oh, the time machine, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of one work. of my favorite movies I've seen uh, in my childhood, and I was so fascinated by these Morlocks. They looked so bad and ugly. And, um, yeah, I, I really love this story made by A.G. Wells. Um and yeah, this this was made too for for um, for Steinerei especially because uh, the theme for Steinerei in two thousand and I don't remember seven or eight was uh, remake remake. So for me it was like oh remake okay let's remake the time machine. This is one of my favorite movies from my childhood. What really impressed me, I, I never was reading the book since. The time when I tried to make the short story for uh, for a brick film, the time machine is really I, I I really love the time machine. I only I hate that I never made um, a real English uh, dialogue version because um, it was always important for me when I started brick filming to make it either understandable without words for uh, the whole world because if you publish your stuff what we all not did in the beginning on youtube because there was no youtube when we started uh, we hosted our movies to whatever archive.org or we hosted our own little websites where the people were able to download the movie in a very bad quality and i always tried to make either 
a German and an English version, like in the Goethe poems, so that people can understand it. Um, and in the time machine, there is only this German version because I never were able to, I don't know why to, 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 to fix it and to find people or, I don't know, this movie is so long ago now, I don't know if it's still good to just make another version in English. I don't know. I, actually, I forgot that it was subtitled. I guess we watched, had the subtitles, but um, you, it's so well done. You for, you don't even realize that you're um, reading subtitles. It was just fantastic. The effects, the the glowing eyes were amazing. The oh, was the glowing awesome. eyes! That, uh, if you really look at them, it's made in Photoshop. They move uh, not right with the head. I hate the glowing eyes. <laughs> I didn't notice it. I See, did, you shouldn't I did have said not. anything. Well, we'll edit that out so nobody even yeah, knows because yeah. they won't notice it. <laughs> okay, can you cut that out then? I love the glowing eyes. I, I, I love, love the, the glowing, glowing eyes. eyes there, period. Yeah, me too, me too, me too. No, <laughs> let leave that in. Don't cut anything out, please. That's all. <laughs> No, okay. no, no. But yeah, um, in this, in this, um, the, the time machine, there were also things just to try out, um, like making the eyes glow of the Morlocks, and um, there's also a lot of mega block stuff inside of that movie. Um, <laughs> so uh, it was a time when, when uh, a lot of people on BrickFilms.com suddenly had this wall backgrounds and i thought where are they from these cool brick walls in the background and uh, i think in 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 these uh, discussions i found out that it was from mega blocks uh, alien agency sets <laughs> and i bought i think i bought like four sets on ebay uh, us and uh, just when they came to me to Germany, I really hated mega blocks beside these walls because it it felt so cheap. And but these these walls were so perfect. I think you can see these walls in in his living in his um, laboratory. And uh, yeah, it's 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 different things again, just to try out. And in this case, I think this was the first movie. I was writing before we started to film it um, a script because you had I had to break down the whole story what is um, in the original cinema movie from 1952 or whatever it was uh, it's it's like a one hour and thirty minutes movie or something like this and you need to break down this story especially for Steinerei. And in Steinerei, there was a timetable for the movie. In this case, I think it was like six or seven minutes. And when we finished Time Machine, Sandra and me, we noticed, oh, it's like 10 minutes. We can't enter it. Um. And I wrote, uh, I wrote the organizer and said, mm, the movie is longer, but I can't make it shorter. What can I do? Asking myself. And then we made a little trick. We split it in, in two halves. And Sandra put one half mm -hmm. into the contest and me the other half. Oh. But this was not so good seen by the other uh, guys entering the contest. Then we said, okay, we put it out of the contest because it's right. It's just the, the movie is too long. We uh, we killed the timeline uh, for the length, and we don't want to make a bad uh, thing, and that the others are angry about us. And we said, okay, put it out of uh, the contest. But uh, the guy making the contest said, no, no, I like this film. Okay, let's put it out of the price system, but I want to show it. And not in two parts, it needs to be in one part. So um, it was not really in the whole uh, system. It was played, but not uh, priced, I think. Or was it? No. Was there another trick? <laughs> Let me see. 
I have to Google the wiki. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, uh, thank yous to Brick Films Wiki for uh, they help us do all this research. We go to their website, and it is very helpful for doing these podcasts. So thank you, Brick Films Wiki. Yeah, and for and also for people listening, it, it has a great link for all of the people that we interview. You can see all of their work and all of their accomplishments, and it really is the most wonderful information. Yeah, thank you, uh, Brick Film Wiki. And I want to know who are the crazy guys writing all this and knowing everything. Yeah, yeah it takes a lot of patience, but hey, that these are Brick Filmers, right? So if you do stop motion, you have patience. Yeah, sure, but they, they really know every detail. Uh, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Well, they're very dedicated. Um, we also want to um, thank you for judging our previous um, BFG Film Festival. A few years back. Uh, a few years back. We appreciate you taking the time to, to be one of the judges. So thank you very much. And, and thank you for introducing us to Mirko Hortzman. Oh yes, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he he did a great job. Yeah, he's doing so. a great job. He's uh, he's, he's on again for the third time, so he'll be a th uh, uh, cool. And if cool. you you know just have a discussion with him, if you ever want to uh, take the uh, judging back, you know, just say, hey, Mirko, let me do it this year. So uh, I, that I, takes I, a cool. lot of time. It takes a lot of time <laughs> if you're interested. But uh, I like keeping uh, judges from different kind of little subgroups because I think it helps. Um, the, yeah. ju the judging come out to be fair, um, and yeah, you know, we, yeah. you're we've, right. We've got representation, for, representation from uh, Brickboard uh, uh, website. We've got representation um, from Brickabrac and and a few other places, and it, it makes for great judging. So thank you very much again for introducing us. Um, thank you for 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 doing so much for the community, like like the Brick Filmers Guild. So. I think you, you both, or your family, your whole family, did a lot of stuff for brick filming, uh, especially with with uh, yeah, either hosting contests or um, uh, having this web space for people to connect each other. But uh, going to Mirko Horstmann, may, maybe you can give him a break because he stopped uh, doing movies for the Steinerei within the last years. What we all uh, think is really, really uh, bad because he made so many good things for Stanerei. He, he won it uh, a few years ago when he made movies. He won it from year to year, every time. Wow. And now he always is there. He's, he always hosted Stanerei uh, a few years ago. Um, but every time he says, ah, next time I'm, doing my, I'm trying to do a movie, and then he's at Stanerei, and um, he was not able. <laughs> but he's a he's a coder for computer stuff, and I think he has a lot to do, beside uh, yeah, making animated movies. Well, he's he's super nice, and we we appreciate uh, him being on board. Um, so thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I like I said, there's we're running out of time, but um, you have so many. All of your videos are special in their own way, and I will make sure that everybody has the links to find all of your fabulous, uh, brilliant work. I've been fortunate enough to to know you for years and correspond with you, and uh, you know I look forward to everything that you do, just like we all do. I hope soon there will something new on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is a little, uh, yeah. It's it's a little dusty within the last years because you know how long it takes to make a movie and sometimes people uh, wrote comments like, when will be the next movie on? And it's mm -hmm. not like we just go in front of the camera and tell crap about what happened on the day. So we need the time to do it. And the deeper you go into it and you you always want to top your film what you made before. So it needs more and more time to do something. But... I really have to say within the last years, there's not a lot coming uh, freshly on my YouTube channel. I thought about making a little series about um, tips and tricks for animation, but a lot of people did this too. And, you know, I, I don't like to see myself in front of the camera that uh, much. But you're like so to used be to being behind. in front of the camera. You're used to it and you're great in front of the camera. And you'd be surprised. Yeah, people but, love to hear um, tips. But but to explain something and then doing it in English again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always a little, 
ah, disturbing for yourself or for me. Um, if, if I think if I, if my mother language would English uh, would be English, I think I would have started with such things years ago, and maybe have uh, one or two thousand uh, subscribers more. But yeah, I I think. If I would do something like tips and tricks for brick filming or tools for brick filming, then I would try to do it without words again, you know, just like showing this, showing this. So combining it like crafting and then you can make this um, to do this just without words. So a child from, let's say, Afghanistan, India, Australia, uh, China can watch it and can understand it uh, even if it's not speaking English or whatever, I think this is this is the most the most interesting way to present something. Um, but it makes it also harder because you really have to know how to present the stuff. Yeah, but but um, I would like to see some more movies on my own channel. But like I said, I'm a little lazy within the last years doing the same quantity like i did it when i when i started brick filming that's our dog if you can hear making noise with her collar um i i oh. still think do you that that would be um a great idea doing the tips and tricks even without the words or even just showing like we do once a year try to do just a little studio tour because you have so many um cool lego things and your table and your uh your uh, your whole workshop Workspace, yeah. uh, is just so interesting. I think everybody would love seeing that. Maybe I'm, I, I need to do uh, more videos. You gave me some inspiration, so maybe soon we'll be on my YouTube channel more. But I, I, I post more on Instagram at the moment, like all the pictures from the Lego stuff. Or um, Yesterday I was live on Instagram with uh, jamming with music. So um, maybe I have to try this on YouTube. I, maybe I have more more listeners than just on Instagram, the five, six people. <laughs> then maybe on YouTube it's like 200. I don't know. Let's try this out. But yeah, if, if you, if you uh, never stumbled across my um, Instagram account, you can add me there too um, for, all your, for all your listeners um, right now on the podcast. It's uh, Go Lego Animation on Instagram. We'll put a link there in the, in the description of both the YouTube and the uh, blog that we post the um, podcast on. Yeah, and sometimes also I do little uh, stories on Instagram with uh, private or work radio stuff. So you see a little more than just Lego, but mostly I try to do Lego, but I'm not only into Lego, and uh, sometimes I put other stuff on Instagram, but... I think if you really want to build up a big community, you never should do but I'm too crazy just to focus on one thing there. I think it's good <laughs> to do lots of things, though, and that's what makes it interesting. Yeah, hopefully. Definitely. Yeah, but but let's see. Maybe maybe I go later down to my Lego room and start uh, trying to find the, the good uh, new way to make my building table cleaning up a little more. And, uh, yeah, maybe then I start again doing a little movie when, when I have the idea for, for the Steinerei 2018 movie. Well, we look forward Let's to that. Let's see. Yep, we should <laughs> wish you the best of luck with that because we look forward to seeing it. Yeah, luck, luck is good. Luck is a good thing for that. <laughs> I, I, I need luck. I need a lucky idea now. And if you need any voices, it. you know we're here for you. <laughs> yes, I will call you soon. Maybe in an half hour. <laughs> So how do you say um, goodbye or how you would farewell in, in German? Uh, if you say it in an old school way, you say Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, okay. I like that. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. If, if you make it short and you know people, then you say just Tschüss. Tschüss? Tschüss? Yeah. Tschüss. Oh, okay. oh no, it was. Now it was the you with the dots and you had it perfect. Tschüss. <laughs> Tschüss. Excellent. Tschüss. Yeah. Tschüss. Now, now we have to repeat the, the the O with the dots. What is in my second name? Like Truga. 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 Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, that was. Uh, repeat, please. <laughs> Truga. Yeah. Again, please. Again, please. I wasn't <laughs> able to listen to it. Truga. Truga. No, that was, that was the U with the dots. Mm. You need the O with the dots. What Truga. is Truga. Truga. 
<laughs> it's it's so funny if you English people try to do an uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh. You, okay, wait, you say then, it. You say it and then I'll I, say it. I, I think there were a lot of phrases what really were funny when I tried to speak English. So, um, yeah, for everyone, English is not my mother language, uh, but yeah, it was always for me better while at school learning English than French because French always in my head was like a big desert uh, trying to get the real uh, time and uh, oh, it was horrible and English for me was always easier uh, because I thought don't think about the times and uh, uh, present and uh, future and whatever I just try to speak and I noticed that people were able to understand me so yeah. Well, I'll tell you the I same hope, thing. I, I hope mostly was understandable. It was completely understandable. And I'll tell you the same thing I told Maxime last week. When Americans hear people with an accent speaking English, it is absolutely adorable and charming. But on the, okay. but unfortunately, when we try to speak your language, it just sounds horrible. And it like nails on a chalkboard, I said. I know it's horrible. But you sound it, it adorable. It does not sound horrible. But beside the U, everything was good. <laughs> Only the U was horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for spending this much time with us. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure speaking with you and getting to learn more about you and your work. Thank you very much uh, for and... being in the show and learning from you. And um, uh, thank you very much for uh, to all the listeners listening to, to your podcasts. And yeah, thank you for um, having me in the show. And I uh, wish you a wonderful weekend. And hopefully Thanks. maybe we'll get a chance to talk to you again. Absolutely. Okay, I try, great. Um, I'm always available. Just give me a call. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Tschüss. <laughs> Okay, tschüss mit Ö und nicht mit Ö. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks so much to Stefan for being incredibly generous with his time, and thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this entire podcast. Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage, and don't forget to check out Stefan's amazing Brick Films on his YouTube channel. We want to give a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters, Spug is Do, Something's Awry Productions, Frame 5 Studios, Dude Brick, Mind Game Studios, DT98 Films, and Dark Dragon Films. Your support truly means the world to us. Thank you all so much. If you would like to sponsor one of our podcasts, please contact me through one of our social media sites. We would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcast and in our brick films. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, please rate and comment. We'd really appreciate that. Lastly, there are two ballots that members of the Brick Filmers Guild can vote on. Voting for 2017 Brick Filmer of the Year and 2017 BFG Film Festival's Members' Choice. You have until the end of March to cast your vote. Links to the ballots are on the BFG website. So, until next time, bye y'all!